bizarre twist in a story we've been covering for weeks here on Newsy Tonight. Chinese tennis star Peng Shuai now denies making sexual assault allegations against a retired Communist Party leader. Shuai is changing her story as the concern from the international tennis community persists over just how freely Peng is able to communicate about the alleged assault as well as general concern about her physical safety. Here's a rundown of how we got to this point because it's been a lot and if you've lost track of things we don't blame you. On November 2nd, in a post on her verified social media account, Peng Shuai accused the former vice premier of the Chinese Communist Party of sexual assault, a man with whom she'd had a years-long affair. The post was quickly scrubbed from the site, but not before it started making the rounds online. Two weeks later, Chinese state-run media released an email. They say Peng wrote to the Global Women's Tennis Association walking back her sexual assault allegations. The chairman of the WTA publicly doubted the authenticity of the email and asked for an investigation. November 18th, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson brushed off questions about Peng's whereabouts saying, this is not a foreign affairs matter. The next day, Peng's disappearance became a diplomatic concern with the United Nations calling for an investigation into the sexual assault claim and the United States demanding China provide verifiable proof of Peng's whereabouts. The International Olympic Committee president says on November 21st, he had a video call with Peng. The video was not released, only a still photo, got criticism as a publicity stunt. On the first of this month, the Women's Tennis Association changes everything. WTA uh, CEO Steve Simon announces they are immediately suspending all WTA tournaments in China and Hong Kong. On December 2nd, the IOC announced they had a second video call with Peng the previous day, and the organization said it, quote, reconfirmed that Peng appeared safe. Then, December 19th, Peng Shui breaks her silence to a Singaporean Chinese language news outlet. According to a translation, she said, I never said anything, nor have I written anything about anybody sexually assaulting me. I want to bring in Aaron Solomon, Chief Legal Analyst for Esquire Digital. Aaron, it's good to see you. Uh, where's your head in terms of what this latest statement means? I mean, do you have any reason to think that what she's saying here is genuine? Well, I think what she's saying is genuine in that she's genuinely in fear of her life and the lives of those people she loves. Um, this is, none of this is new. So this process that we're seeing play out right now with Peng Shui has several different stages. And we are seeing right now the first to last stage, and that stage is called the recanting stage. And that's what she did on the weekend in saying, no, no, I never said that this former vice premier of China had sexually abused me in any way. And by the way, this is a very private matter. So that's the stage we're in right, right. now. It's very common. Take yeah, take me inside that a little bit, because from her perspective, and you talk about being in fear of, of her own personal safety and that of her family. I mean, wh what's that like from where she sits? Because certainly this is a, uh, it would appear to be, and that's what I'm getting to with my first question there, a very uh, sort of sort of orchestrated, calculated uh, infrastructure around her. So from where she sits in the middle of all that scaffolding, I mean, what's she looking at in terms of fallout if she doesn't go along here? That question is really perfectly worded. I I've got to commend you for that because this notion of scaffolding is very, very, very important here because there's nothing that Peng can think of doing that the Chinese government hasn't thought of. So there's no way she's able to go out and tell the world, I fear for myself or others. You know, last week there was a WTA tournament, a lower level tournament, as most of the players are on their off season right now in France. And the tournament director, a former male pro, said, we'd love to have you, Peng, come to France and hand out the winner's trophy, knowing very well there's no way she was going to be able to leave China. Even if she could find a way to leave China and was safe herself, her friends and family wouldn't be safe. This is something that happens over and over again with high-profile Chinese people. We saw this with Jack Ma, and we saw this with Fang Bang Bang, so the actress. So none of this is new. They understand exactly what they're doing, and she has to toe literally the party line in what she says and the way she communicates at this point. Is there a difference this time in what the WTA is doing, and is there more for China to lose now if they can't smooth things over with the WTA in the next few weeks, especially with the, the Olympics coming up? 
If you would have said to me two months ago that, you know, Mr. Simon, the head of the WTA, was going to be this international sports hero, I would have shaken my head. The WTA is the only sports organization, including the IOC and the men's ATP tennis, that's done anything here by withdrawing all of the business operations from China. It's Peng right now that it makes such a difference for her and for her future what happens with the Beijing Olympics. I guarantee that she's been told very, very clearly, you've got two jobs. Job number one is to make sure that these Beijing Olympics happen perfectly. Job number two is you need to get that billion dollars of WTA tennis back into China. And I think that her future and what we know of her future and how much we hear from her over the next years is going to depend on how well she does those two things. That's a very, very difficult, mm. it's an impossible position for her to be in. Do you suppose, given all that, that we'll ever really know the truth here, that we'll ever really know what happened? No, because the last stage that she still has to go through after repent is the repenting stage. And once she yeah. repents and basically says, all of this was entirely my fault, all we're going to see publicly from Peng for the rest of her life is exactly what we've seen from other people in these situations, which is Chinese social media posts that are very jingoistic and patriotic. And the good news is, if we actually do have years of that, we know that Pung is alive. But Pung is never going to be safe again. Wow. Aaron Solomon, I appreciate your perspective and putting it in such a stark way for us. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you very much.